What's up guys? Long time to see. Uh, my name is Philippe Oliveira and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to talk about my 90 team to planted tank. That tank um, was or the tank that I'm going to show you was caked last year around March. Tank is doing now 14 months that is caked. And um, the reason of that tank on the beginning was to use that tank as a competition tank. So probably most of you guys don't know that um, as being a judge of CFAA, a China contest, I'm not able to submit my work to YAPLC. So the only contest that I'm able to submit any tank is ISTA. So the thing is, ISTA also canceled uh, his event this year due to COVID-19. Um, YAPLC also canceled the uh, award ceremony, but the online contest is still open, but since I got information for that, that ISTA was going to cancel uh, the award ceremony and still uh, the online uh, contest, so I have decided just to keep that tank as it is and um, just enjoy it. So this tank, as I said before, is doing 14 months. And um, I'm still keeping it in the same way, keeping the same maintenance, maintenance routines, the same fertilization. Um, everything is still more or less the same. Only tank, it got more mature as it was supposed to. And um, of course, that tank is um, giving me more joy now than before. Because um, when you don't have any kind of obligation and keeping a tank, is when you usually take the fun of it. Uh, always my tanks, I keep them for 12 to 16 months. Uh, it's pretty, probably I'm going to escape it sooner or later, maybe before summer break. But meanwhile, this is what I have. Um, the footage that I am going to show you is about my tank. Three weeks, no water change, no cleaning of the pipes, the skimmer, glass, everything is still intact, like no maintenance at all was being done for three weeks. So this tank is made by ILA. ILA Europe is a Portuguese manufacturer. They produce high quality rimless tanks, also stands, racks, uh, or any kind of aquariums that you can think about it, they can create it. They can create it also custom tanks. However, they don't sell to end customers. They will only sell to retailers, all sellers. So if you are interested in a system like this, you need to contact a local shop and see if they are able to get one for you. They are made in float or optuite glass. And this tank is made just by question of security and even finishing in 12 millimeters glass, opti-white, and the cabinet is made in aluminum, lacked and painted in black, um, glossy uh, paint. So just to avoid a lot of uh, fingerprints in the cabinet and the doors. And um, there is one nice drawer where we can keep our tools inside. So the full tank is, um, produced by ILA, and then, of course, we have above some Twin Star 900 SA, and uh, since this tank has 90 by 60 by 45 centimeters high, I am using two lighting systems. And why? Uh, this tank is not so tall, so it means 45 centimeters high is not a lot of weight, and adding 60 centimeters depth uh, means that the tank, if the light is positioned more to the front or more backwards, uh, there is a lot of shadow depending how you create the layout. Um, when I build up this set or setup, I already knew uh, what I wanted to do. So the idea was just place two lights just to have the full coverage and avoid a lot of shadow in the front. Of course, if you have a system like 9050 by 50, you can use only one lighting system. It is more than enough. To control the light in this tank, I am using three controllers. That is S2 uh, Pro controllers. You can dim the light. 
Uh, I am running the lights in this tank for about 11 hours and a half, 30 minutes ramp and sunrise, um, in 30 minutes on sunset. Also in the background, on the back of the tank, I have uh, the light ground LED panel, also controllable by LED controller, the same one I use for Twinstar 900SA. So I can dim the peak of the light in the middle of the photo period. So all the light will dim till get or reach the peak. So the two lights above the tank plus the light ground on the background or, on the, or in the back of the tank. So you still have the same intensity, gradual same intensity, just to avoid to have one uh, of the lights more powerful than the other. So in this tank, um, I have a twin star. Also, I have pressurized CO2. And what I'm going to show you regarding the tanks, there is some algae on it. And there is a reason to have some algae on it. And that was because of the CO2. Um, since you guys may know that I was traveling so much since January till summer break, I have everything full booked and uh, I was just spending just a few days at home. And um, during that time that I was traveling in March, the CO2 ran out and uh, that time, can you imagine with two twin stars running without CO2 for three weeks? It was a little bit chaotic. So it was a lot of green algae and um, what I have decided to do, uh, instead of using chemicals, instead of using Flourish, Excel, uh, any other products just to kill the algae, and since the tank was running so well from the very beginning, what I have done was just to put the CO2 a little bit above that I usually use and um, let the nature take its own time just to fight the algae back. But you guys may be wondering, if you uh, just set the CO2, what happens with the algae and also with the plants? Are you still fertilizing in the same way or not? Um, the routine fertilization, the fertilization routine in this tank is almost the same since the first day when I escaped it. It was 14 months ago. Uh, I use a very lean fertilization routine. Uh, if you want, I can just place a link below um, in the description. So one video that I already did about um, my fertilization routine, what I usually do in my tanks, uh, because I use a very heavy and nutritional based soil with usually normal substrate and put a lot of root tubs. And why the root tubs? Because I tend to reuse the soil for so many scapes. And then if we use a different kind of minerals and a different color, so the soil will be sprinkled with um, different uh, elements. So with the root tops, since they will go into dissolve on the soil, anytime that I want to rescape, just give a little bit of wash, uh, wash it a little bit and then take all the dust and the mud. Um, I'll vacuum, just drain it a little bit, let it dry, and then I will rescape it again. So in this tank, from the very beginning till now, I'm still using the same fertilization routine. I'm using potassium, 20 milligrams uh, per liter in a week uh, of potassium. Then every next week, I'm dosing uh, macros, um, um, nitrogen and phosphorus, and then next week, iron and so on and so on. Every single week, I dose 20 milligrams um, of uh, potassium on that tank. So we'll keep the plants growing slower than normal because some people make a confusion about farming and aquascaping. In aquascaping, you should take the things a little bit, um, I would say, slower. I don't need to have the rush just to growing the plants in a very fast way because Plants, if they grow too fast, they will not get the color. They will not get the volume. And then the, even the space between the stalls can have a little bit bigger. So the thing is you have an extra work being trimming your planted tank every two weeks. So the thing that I want to avoid is more maintenance than normal. I want the plants to grow um, slowly with time, with color and volume. So I trim my tank every 30, 45 days, not before, unless I want to grow them a little bit faster. So 
I reduced this for three weeks to four weeks, but then it says want to multiply a little bit the plants. For some reason, I want to recover some affected area that probably would get some damage about the other trimming or there is not much leaves on the stems. So I need to trim it a little bit down and just to be sure the plant's growing healthy and there is no lack of nutrition on the new leaves, I will always tend to those a little bit more macros than normal. Of course, plants will grow faster, but with less color than usual. So this is normal. Uh, that you can find some algae in this tank. I'm not that concerned if the algae is under control. Um, I think there is no tank algae free. There is always something here and there. And um, since I'm not going for contests and not rushing things to have a very clean design, uh, having a little bit algae here and there uh, don't... Uh, um, I don't care that much. It's um, not taking my sleep. So I can live with them. And also uh, I want to know how much time will take even for the fish or a normal balance system will take just to get rid of them, just to clean them. And this is why I just decide to keep the tank like this. It's also a nice challenge for me because most of the time we are always rushing things because we're preparing tanks for the exhibition. We are preparing tanks for uh, a showroom when everything must be clean and precise. But then we need to have in mind, we cannot rush nature because nature takes its own time. And usually what happens when you rush things the things tend to go really, really bad. So just coming back from the beginning, so we talked about the light. I have 11 hours and a half of light. Fertilization routine is still more or less the same as I'm doing from the first day that I escaped this tank. Slowly, no time to rush. And even that allow me to keep my maintenance very, very short and lean because I usually change the water on my tank every 15 days. This tank right now, because I also want to see the behavior of the Ramirez is with old water. When I mean with old water, when you don't change the water for some reason, the, the water becomes a little bit cold and also a little bit more acid. And what I want to see is at the point they will change their behavior and start to breed. However, it will not be succeed in a tank like that because there is a lot of predators around. There is a lot of fish. So if for some reason they decide to lay some eggs, they will be eaten for sure. But this is just a test. And also to check against algae, how they will uh, thrive, if they will still continue spreading in the tank or if they just get rid of them. So the way is just make a competition between plants and algae and see how it goes. So far, as you can see, there is just a little bit here and there, nothing to be concerned that much. I am not so worried about. Uh, there is also some fish that will need some algae to, to eat and uh, to be fed. So still okay. And then um, I have the CO2 on this tank. I'm using a, a inline pressure, uh, inline um, CO2 reactor. Uh, I just got this in uh, eBay. I don't remember the name of this. Maybe I think it's M1 something. But I can just show you a video of that. Uh, as you can see right now, um, this is uh, aluminum part with a um, with a pin part with a cylindrical. Uh, diffuser, so it gets a very thin mist in the tank, um, dosing more or less two, three bubbles per second because the water here is a little bit soft. So when the water is soft, it tends to increase a little bit more the doses of CO2 because your plants, the, the metabolism, the photosynthesis will be faster. And since I am using so much light in this tank, I need to have a lot of CO2, otherwise algae will pop out, okay? So maintenance, water change every two, three weeks. Of course, if you can make it every single week of uh, 30 to 50% good, then um, uh, just uh, clean the pipes, the filter. I am cleaning the filter every 30, 45 days, more or less. 
not because um, the filter is dirty, because last time uh, I took it more or less two months, uh, I just, uh, I have a big bucket with uh, biological filtration inside and then just a small coat of um, filter, uh, we call that um, the white foam uh, filter floss uh, in the filter and the filter floss was completely clean. So the idea is just to clean a little bit the impeller of the pump so to keep the flow running at the same level because sometimes we are facing some algae just because the flow is not exactly the same or something in your tank because the complete overgrowth of the plants will not allow the water to circulate all the tank and some algae they can pop up here and there. Okay, so um, besides that, I don't usually vacuum the bottom. Um, I tend to trim more or less the bottom and the stem plants in different stages, not at the same time, unless it is really extremely necessary. So I can just uh, trim both, but usually just to keep more or less the balance, I do in different individual days. And this is it, guys. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of cinematic video of this tank. Um, I believe that more or less one, two months, I'm going to rescape it. I didn't before because with COVID-19 and the quarantine, I was not able to find the right artscape because I already have an idea of what I want to do in this tank. Usually I like to uh, work um, by improvisation, just to get some material, start working on it. In my opinion, it's more natural in that way. However, if you go for a competition tank, it's better if you can have a design in your head what exactly you want to create. And don't let the material decide for you uh, the best that you can get from the layout. So the big difficult, not right now, but it was uh, more or less two months ago, since March, it was the quarantine, I was the volunteer quarantine. The government afterwards declared a permanent quarantine, only the main base uh, companies, uh, business like healthcare, food, you know, essential companies were open and it was very difficult to find material. We can buy it online, I understand, but for that specific project, we need to fill the material in hand. We need to see it. We need to see for the volume, we need to see for the textures. So, so you can buy the material exactly for what you really need. And uh, I believe now that till summer break, I will find them somehow maybe in one shop, wholesale or whatever, I will just try to get it. And then um, no idea if I'm going to keep that secret or just make a step-by-step -step, uh, and different episodes for you guys. One thing I'm sure, I have my 80 liters planted tank, the kitchen one, and it was not escaped yet because of the protection of the finger, because I broke the ligament, I could not have my hands wet. And then I have decided to keep that tank as soon as it get better. For the moment, as you can see, it is still not completely straight. Uh, still facing a few issues, it hurts a little bit now, and I need to be careful to don't hit with my finger with something solid. Otherwise, it could damage again the ligament, and then uh, maybe I will risk a surgery. But anyhow, I will escape that tank and I want to record all the stages. I want to record the step-by-step -step in the artscape planting. Maybe we can call it a budget layout using the leftovers that I had on that tank and also on the balcony where I have some material that I usually am going to, I'm still collecting from my visits to some shops. Okay, and this is it guys. So now you can enjoy a cinematic view of this 90 centimeters tank. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did so, so give me a big thumbs up. Any doubt, just place in the comments below. And um, don't forget to 
click on that notification bell if you want to be notified about future uploads. Okay, so take care, take good care of yourself and see you in the next video. Bye.